Hi, this is Nando from CNC Commentaries. On this episode of CNT Movie Breakdowns, we're going to be talking about V for Vendetta, one of my favorite movies. And of course, I couldn't do this alone. I'm joined by my esteemed co-host, Chase. Hey, that's that's me. That is you. Yeah. We're, we're talking about V for Vendetta. This, this film has everything. It has uh, viruses, it has people... Uh, protesting and rioting against the government uh, set in 2020 this still feels uh, like a lot of deja vu right now <laughs> yeah that's for sure it is it is, it is this, this movie is uh, strangely uh, uh, strangely similar to some things we're, we're seeing in our own world right now but if it's time you know Maybe one day somebody will 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 get a V of our own. I'll do it. I'll be comfy. Uh, anyway. Well, you heard it here first. That's uh, that's his uh, confession, folks. Yeah. Watch. I'm about so to when get they, when they did when, when they dig this up in forty years. I'm gonna get my own Netflix show. It's gonna be called The Nando Tapes. It'll I be great. Yeah. I'm, I'm not associating with this man. I don't know him. Anyway, uh, so we're, we're talking about V for Vendetta. This one's one of my favorite movies. I, I love this movie a lot. Uh, but why don't you give us a synopsis? Uh, okay. Uh, v for Vendetta is a 2005 uh, film. It's based on a um, a like graphic novel um, by Alan Moore. And um, it follows the story of uh, a vigilante type named V, uh, played by Hugo Weaving, um, who some people would say he's a terrorist, and he's kind of like fighting against uh, the government and like like the oppressive types. And then he meets this woman named Evie, played by Natalie Portman, and um, you know they they fight the government and. Yeah, it's, uh, a lot goes down in this film. Yep. And of course, this is based on the graphic novel by Alan Moore. And illustrated by David Lloyd. Yeah, I said it. Yep, yep, yep. And... Uh, should we jump into, uh, our general thoughts before we... Sure, I'll go first. Uh, so I read the graphic novel before watching the movie. That was quite, quite many, many moons ago. And, uh, you know, I really like the graphic novel. And I, when I watched the movie, I think this movie is a great example of changing the source material. This movie doesn't exactly follow the source material to a T, but I think it holds enough of the, it holds the essence of the of the original story. You know, it's going for a little bit of a different story, but it holds what made the original graphic novel so good. And I think that's key to uh, an adaption. If you're gonna change some elements of the story of the characters, that's fine, but you have to keep the essence, or the, the core. And yeah, I think that results in a really good movie. So yeah, this, this movie has always been one of my favorites, and in my opinion has got one of the coolest movie protagonist ever. What about you, Chase? Uh, I don't have as strong of an affinity towards this movie as you do. I've seen this once before. Uh, I, I didn't read the, uh, the comic. Um, you know me, I'm not a big comic guy. Uh, but I, I was interested to see how much uh, this movie I would actually remember, because it had been a while. Um, and um, I, I do remember always enjoying Hugo Weaving and Natalie Portman in this. Um, and I feel like um, this movie, uh, like, kind of does hold like a, a spot in the cultural zeitgeist, uh, like popularizing the Guy Fox mask. I think uh, greater. And uh, I think a lot of people know the, the famous quote: "Remember, remember the fifth of November." But I don't know if they've, like, really seen this movie. Um, but, like, everyone knows that quote, I think. And I think 
that shows uh, what it has uh, made. But uh, I I enjoyed this film decently. Uh, I'm not like a big action guy myself, um, but there are some parts of this movie I really like. Some big themes that I think this is trying to tackle that I enjoy. Um, and then there are other parts that we'll get to that I think could be better and uh, I don't just didn't really work fully for me, I guess. Oh, uh, well. Everything worked for me pretty well. <laughs> and we'll jump into this. Oh, uh, yeah, but without further ado, let's, uh, let's go in depth. So, this movie's opening. Chase, walk us through this movie's opening. It's got a pretty strong opening. Uh, I mean, yeah, right off the bat, we are introduced to our our two uh, main characters just right off the bat. We are thrown into the action. Um, it starts off with um, Evie and V separately um, in their houses uh, watching TV, and um, they're watching the news, um, and, you know, both separately. And then Evie uh, goes out of the house... Uh, and we find out later that she's uh, going to see a, a guy named Dietrich, um, but we don't know that at first. Uh, and then she gets attacked um, by these secret police, these the, two guys. The Fingermen. <laughs> yeah, the Fingermen. Uh, and they start harassing her and um, kind of insinuating all these uh, disgusting things. And then out of nowhere, like a shadow, uh, a, a, a man pops out in a guy fox mask. And this is V. Yeah. And V has a really cool introduction. Uh, you know, these, these figure men are like abusing their power because Natalie Portman's out of out past curfew. And uh, she is just, uh, he, he like beats all the guys up and he humiliates them. He doesn't kill them though. Uh, but, you know, he, he has like this huge alliteration start with a ton yeah. of words using the letter V. That's probably one of the most f famous scenes in the movie. And, you know, I, I, I've always really liked this uh, this opening scene, so it's got a special place in my heart. Uh, but yeah, we, and then he, he invites Evie out uh, to uh, hear some music. Which, I just want to say, if I was Evie, I would not be following this this creepy man like i know he just saved her life but still just because one creepy guy gets rid of two other creepy guys does not make it like you know i i myself personally would not have followed oh well she must have read the script uh anyway so uh we get another really really cool scene um in which uh b he uh he manages to take control of all over the uh the net the fascist governments uh kind of like uh their speaker system and he plays the 1812 overture uh and he blows up old the old bailey yes it's and it's a decent film in my book if uh, it has the 1812 overture that's uh yeah. and then just you know it's you know when we see it throughout the movie just these these like grand explosions and like action scenes that go on set to orchestral pieces yeah and it's just that like juxtaposition of uh you know chaos and uh, beautiful music yeah uh and uh, right at, right at the start here we kind of see uh, a difference between v's character in uh the movie here and v's character in the actual we get to see in this first old bailey scene we get to see uh the differences between uh v's character in the graphic novel and him in the movie because in the movie he's portrayed uh, as much more uh, heroic than he is in the graphic novel i mean don't get me wrong he's definitely still an anti-hero he kills people in the movie to achieve his goals but uh he does it with he 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 acts like uh you know he watches romance movies he fences he's just acting much more i don't know charismatic uh, but in the graphic novel, he's a lot more uh, hardened, and his old—he ba has a conversation with the old Bailey statue, 
and it's really famous because you know it is it, it's insinuates uh you know sexual things and it just in the in the graphic novel he's portrayed as much more crazy and i can understand why they uh decided to remove that for this adaptation i mean yeah of course uh you know with everything or not with everything but there you know people always make uh certain changes depending on source material and whatnot and uh you know, obviously, you're more familiar with that than I am, but, um, so, you know, I, I can't, like, pull from these same spots that you can of, like, comparing and contrasting the two, um, but, uh, I imagine that it's, uh, you know, like, when you're watching it, like, nitpicking, you can easily nitpick here and there, because I do the same thing with, like, stuff I'm familiar with. Yeah. And after uh, he, after V blows up old, uh, the old Bailey, uh, yeah, he return, he re he returns Evie, and uh, you know the night is over, and uh, we're we're getting awfully close to the fifth of November here. Yeah, it's and, a big day. Yeah, as as you said earlier, uh, this movie definitely popularized the Guy Fox mask. And Guy Fox was a guy who tried rising up against people he saw as tyrannical, and he tried blowing up Parliament. Uh, but he was caught, and he was and he was executed on the fifth of November. And uh, yeah, so V is is trying to trying to bring back the Guy Fox story. And uh, yeah, that's why he. That's why the fifth of November is very important in this movie. Uh, but yeah, eventually uh, we find out that uh, Evie works at like the news station that uh, Diedrich, or as he's called, the Voice of London, is working. And uh, the people uh, of this uh, of Britain, because the movie takes place in Britain and takes place in twenty twenty with a fascist government. They are told to never trust their government, but always trust the news. Yes, very uh, poignant. Uh, I think any point in time you watch this movie, because you know a lot of people, uh, you know, don't think, but you know, television news, um, for better or worse, is always some sort of type of propaganda in a way. Yeah. Are there there? There are definitely like. Uh, of course, this movie. This movie was uh, the book was originally written when uh, in 1982, with, uh, because Alan Moore was basically. Uh, in this book is kind of like him complaining about Margaret Thatcher. And when the movie was made, it was kind. It wasn't like necessarily complaining about Margaret Thatcher. It was complaining about Bush, and his administration. So it's kind of interesting to see those things, like especially when Diedrich's giving his speech and he's like talking about all these foreigners and he's talking about how everybody who doesn't believe in the same things he does, like he even brings up like Muslims, terrorists, you know. Well, all I mean, these it's, it's 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 I think it's like one of those things. It just touches on like those themes that are kind of like yeah timeless and universal in a way. Because I mean, I, I mean we could talk talk about this now, but like. Um, while I was watching this now, from a new perspective, uh, I was getting a lot of uh, 1984 vibes. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I probably feel the same way even if John Hurt wasn't in this. Yeah, this um, movie but, definitely has some definite homages to 1984 with uh, yeah. Brother Eye and things like her. <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, and uh, it and just... I, I... Oh, sorry, continue. <laughs> Oh, I was just, yeah, and I think those themes are, you know, like, those themes of, like, uh, you know, overarching government and just, uh, it, it's seen in both words. Yeah, I mean, this movie's trying to tell a lot of things, and I feel like that's why it's so memorable, because these are, these are things that could happen today, you know, fascist governments are extremely scary, censorship, things like that. Yeah, but I feel like, for me at least, sometimes it feels like it's almost trying to cover too many things at once. And it feels like very uh, chaotic and uh, just like tied up. Yeah, and, I can imagine. You know, it gets, it gets a little messy. I think. Just trying to cover so many things. Like I appreciate it for trying to tackle like all these big things, but I feel like sometimes just doing too much at once can be a little overbearing. Right. Just a little bit though. 
And uh, so after, eventually, V decides that uh, he, on the 5th of November, he's going to attack the news station and he's going to broadcast VTV, his own little broadcast. And uh, that's, that's a news channel I'd watch. Yep. And this is where we get introduced to uh, John Hurt as uh, Adam Sutler. He is the Adam Sutler is the uh, he's the head honcho of the fascist government, mm-hmm. and uh, he is. We all we till the very end of the movie we only ever see this guy on a screen. Yeah, it's very much Big Brother. Like yeah, we say. Yeah, definitely. Um and. So, you know, he's just kind of, he's just going around, and eventually when V breaks in, he, uh, he broadcasted a video for all of the people of, of Britain to see, and he's basically telling them, like, oh, this is your fault that the fascist government showed up in your, f- in, in your fear, you, uh, in your fear, you allowed this to happen. And, uh, for context for fear, uh, this isn't revealed till later in the movie, but the actual fascist government of Britain manufactured a virus, mm-hmm. and they spread it around. That way, people would be scared. And then, when a big when a big party came along, promising cures and you know a ton of good stuff, they would win the election. Uh, so yeah, that's how they became you know fascist. Also, America is having a second civil war, as mentioned in the movie. Yeah. Once again, kind of nail on the head. Yeah, right. this movie uh, this movie was made in two thousand five, but it feels like it was made in twenty twenty. Feels like it's a documentary. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you were saying with the uh, using of the uh, you know artificially creating this virus and uh, kind of using that to like uh, control the masses, and then just using that as another way of uh, controlling people. And getting them to do what they want and kind of just like hurting them along basically and um, I think another thing with you know uh, with John Hurt always just being on screens for the most part and then like throughout the movie various times and scenes we are just we cut to like it's like a bar and then just like you know your everyday household and we just see these people just watching along on the television yeah and you know that, that's obviously a critique on just media itself but yeah yeah it's like the things people see on tv or the news have a very big influence on the the viewer yeah um and uh, another character that we uh, meet here we meet uh, eric finch mm-hmm. the uh the fascist party's inspector and once v takes over the news station and uh he makes a se- successful escape I also we get I love the action in this movie. I think it's choreographed yeah. so well. I will say that the choreography in this movie is is great, especially in the last fight scene. Uh, but this movie uh, has V because V only relies on knives. V V never like picks up a gun and uses it. No, V relies on like he has like a ton of knives strapped on him, and he he's like a more hardcore version of Zor. Yeah, basically. And he wears a Guy Fox mask. Yeah, if, if Zoro wanted to take down the government, uh, this is who he'd be. Yeah. If Zoro just decided he was tired of having to save everybody, he'd just put on a Guy Fox mask and we'd have V for Vendetta. That's a movie I'd, I'd want to see. Uh, Zoro vs. V. Oh. Sword fight to the death. Uh, yeah, but... Uh, v... V uh, uses knives, and he's very agile, and uh, so he, he you can definitely tell that he knows what he's doing. And he eventually he breaks out, and Evie helps him his escape. So he takes Evie back to his little uh, his little hideout, his home. And I really like the some of the set design here is really cool because. And in this movie, V kind of comes off as like a philosopher, you know. As I said earlier, he he kind of fences. He watches romance movies. He reads a lot. He quotes Macbeth. You know those famed activity of philosophers fencing. Fencing. <laughs> yeah, he definitely. And then he has all these great quotes like government or people should not be afraid of their governments. Government should be afraid of the, their people. This movie is definitely very quotable, and V is very quotable. Mm-hmm. 
he definitely sees himself as a, a much greater figure than like he's perceived to be you know with uh, these grander ideas yeah I think he has like the means to accomplish it I mean he blows up old Bailey to the 1812 overture can't get more baller than that I mean once you've done that that's that'd be the highlight of anyone's life yeah and uh, eventually uh, you know V and Evie kind of like uh, they they you know they talk back and forth and we actually get a look at V's hands and we see that he's completely burned up and uh, we never actually see we never know V's identity or we see his face that's something that the book and the movie share uh, because you know I, I don't think that was ever important to the story it was just the ideas that he represented, not who he was. I feel like that would take away if we yeah. saw who he was or if you found gave, out more about him. If you gave this guy a name, it would kind of, like, take away it, from his ideas. It ruined the point. Yeah. Because, you know, even in the end, he, he says, beneath this mask there, there is an idea. You know, that's, like, the entire point. Yeah, and that, like, that end statement of him, which, uh, you know, ideas are bulletproof. That's it's just, that's just a incredibly powerful statement on its own yeah you know v's entire goal is not to overthrow the government by himself it's to rally the people behind ideas and symbols yeah i think his whole point and it's it's shown you know like when he's talking on his uh, you know show and he he just wants the people to think for themselves yeah and come to their own conclusions and, uh, Which are, that's important. Yeah, that is very important. You gotta look. You gotta look at things from your own perspective. You can't just be a sheep and follow everybody else. Uh, but then uh, you know, eventually, they they get to talking, and you know, V eventually, you know, he he falls in love with her throughout the entire movie. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we get. We get uh, Mr. Finch, the the inspector. He's uh, he's uh, he's trying to find clues for V, and uh, eventually they link uh, E. V. or Natalie Portman with V, like, and now they're just they're after both of them, and they're just uh, Finch is just trying to find out who V is and where he came from, mm -hmm. and eventually he lands on this uh, old detention facility. And uh, this detention facility is is shut down. You know, it got it got it, something happened to it, and all the records of it are just erased. And so we also get this kind of nice side plot where uh, Finch is trying to find out who V is, and we kind of get an insight on V's backstory. Uh, but meanwhile, V's been assassinating public officials. Yeah, you know, just just your average pastime, really. Yep. Uh, he is, he assassinates, you know, he kills a lot of, a lot of people in this movie. Yeah, just just a few. And I feel like that's another part of his character. V is not exactly um, supposed to be seen as a hero. He's more of an anti-hero. Oh yeah, definitely. He's an anti-hero vigilante. Yeah. yeah. And I feel you know, I don't I don't even think he himself thinks he's necessarily a good guy. He thinks he's doing a good thing, but you know, he's got to go about it in certain ways that aren't. You know, yeah, but he's it's kind a, of just like to make sure he's seen and he's heard. He's a he's a definite believer in the ends justify the means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I I think that's a really good point what you just said. Yeah, he has to because violence is is very loud. Violence gets people's yeah. attention. So yeah, that's why he's committing these you know terrorist acts. He's I mean, it's it's kind of like the old saying, you know, like uh, you know. Uh, there's no such thing as good or bad press, you know, press is press. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so he's just assassinating public officials, and, because Evie is the only person he saves in the movie. Yeah. Like, and he assassinates, um, you know, he, he assassinates a, a person that works on, like, the news. He's like a, ra like a radio or a TV man. Uh, he assassinates like a doctor that he that used to experiment on him in uh the facility that he used to be at 
And the entire thing with this government is the way it censors people it, is that if it find if the government finds out that you're uh, like being a political activist or things like that, or you're like homosexual, yeah. You know, if you're yeah, just I mean, different. Even, even just little things like they they can't even have a real butter. We yeah. find out, you know, it's just all these like little things put in place to just it's, basically keep them in play. Yeah, it's definitely 1984-esque, uh, because, you know, in 1984 you get, like, once once the government takes somebody away, they never existed. Yeah. yeah. Just once, once somebody wipe them off. Yeah, what, in this movie it's called black bagging. Uh, the government the government agents will bust into your house, put a black bag over your head, and take you to a facility where you're never where you're never seen again. And that's what happened to Evie's parents. And we assume it's what happened to V, because he ended up in one of these facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so uh, while Finch is like uh, going on this quest to find out where V is, he also uncovers the truth on how the gov his government manufactured the virus and uh, he's just uh, he manages to uncover all the clues and uh, it's it's just you can tell that V's kind of lead leading him on because there's even that scene where V goes in a disguise yeah and he gets he dresses up as like this old man yeah like I, I don't know how you I mean obviously it's dark and you know, shadowy, but <laughs> looks so much like a mask. They're just looking up a nose, like it made me laugh, really. But, yeah. And, uh, he and that's another thing. Like most of the, a lot of a lot of the scenes in this movie take place at night or like in darkness and shadows, yeah. which just adds to like the whole the mystery of the character V, like, especially that interrogate like fake interrogation with the uh, Evie. Yeah. And, uh, so, uh, you know, he, uh, he uncovers this, and he's just trying to discover all the information he can, and, uh, we, we get these, uh, two characters that, uh, v, v kills both of them while Finch is trying to protect them. First, he kills the priest, and th this priest is, uh, he's quite, quite the prick. Yeah, he's just creepy, too. Yeah. I mean, like, like most priests, but... <laughs> Yeah, you but... just have you have Natalie Portman all you know dolled up in like this. Yeah, she looks like a little girl. <laughs> yeah, a childish outfit, ballerina outfit. You know, yeah, because the almost priest... getting ready for Black Swan in a way. Because but... the priest likes them young. Uh... Uh... <laughs> yeah, but anyway, there's one of the funniest scenes of the movie where V finally breaks in, and once he's gonna kill the priest, but the priest reaches in a Bible and he pulls out a gun. <laughs> yeah, it's just like. Sure, these are these are normal situations for priests, I guess. Yeah, but anyway, V kills that guy because he used to be at the detention center that uh, V used to work at, or no, V used to be a prisoner at. And then uh, there's that doctor that actually helped manufacture the virus, and uh, she she's she's one of the only connections that they have to the detention facility. So Finch is trying to get a hold of her. But as as V gets to her first, and the way he kills her is actually, you know, it's actually kind of sad. Yeah, I, I really enjoy how this scene is shot. Because V V just shows up in her room in the darkness, and he doesn't like make any violent actions. Because you can tell the doctor is actually like, she feels bad about what she did. Yeah, she's she's understanding. She understands why this is gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, and she even says, like, right before she dies, she says that I'm sorry, V. And a little detail is that V leaves roses at the people that he kills. Yeah. And it's actually really kind of depressing because right before she dies, he gives her a rose. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a more fucked up version of The Bachelor. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. And her last action is to apologize to him like right before she dies she asks him like is is apologizing is apologizing meaningless and he says no and he kills her by lethal injection she doesn't feel any pain which you know if you're if you're gonna get killed by v that's one of the ways you can go one of the best ways 
I mean, all these people that V has, you know, is killing, you know, media personalities, doctors, priests, th these are all people that, like, you know, in everyday circumstances, you know, people would, like, really trust and, like, conf confide in and, you know, you know, like, their jobs hold a lot of power. Yeah. Uh, that, what that people believe. And the, the, all these people, except maybe the doctor, are very, like, arrogant. Uh, they, they can't really be touched, and so they kind of, they abuse their positions. Because yeah. later we find out that the media man that V killed had, like, an extremely huge stash of drugs. Well, I mean, that even goes up to, gov like, government yeah. abusing their power. Now we the, find out the, 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 the priest also, you know, uh, liked younger people allegedly 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 right it's always allegedly we have, we have to say we have, we have to say that for legal reasons yeah allegedly allegedly and uh you definitely tell they're all very arrogant you know they got the wool pulled over the public eyes. uh but as we're progressing further into this movie it, you know the movie is kind of like jumping around because it's getting cr because on his little tv broadcast v is like Okay, next year, on the 5th of November, you guys gotta help me and march on Parliament. Mm -hmm. And so, every, we're, we're kind of like jumping closer and closer to next year's 5th of November. Yeah, it's it's, it's the build-up to uh, next year's uh, November. Yeah. And at first, you know, he says this message, um, and the public is... They, they, they think it's foolish, honestly. They, you know, I like almost a practical jo joke of sorts and you know they it doesn't seem like they are going to follow with him yeah but then public officials start dying yeah, and, well yeah and then the then the media tries to tell the public like oh this guy died in his sleep yeah heart attack yeah and things like that and so the public he's we even get that scene where the uh the government agents are passing through the neighborhood and with like surveillance bugs yeah they're and, going around in these trucks just listening into conversation recording them yeah. and you know all that's being collected and used against them and it's just like you know what's really safe and who can you trust yeah and uh we even during that scene we got a t we got like a ton of people calling the news liars and things like that it's just all these uh things and uh, so yeah, V is publicly assass- or he's like assassinating people, the government is lying, things like that. Then we get Mr. Creedy. This guy is- this guy is quite the person. Uh, yeah, quite, quite the character. Adam Sutler, uh, he- he basically orders Mr. Creedy, he's like- Mr. Creedy's like head of the secret police. Yeah, basically. Yeah, he's like- yeah. Uh, and he orders Mr. Creedy, like, okay, you're gonna, like, arrest anybody that has connections to this guy, and you're gonna find out who this guy is, because Finch isn't doing a good job. And the thing about Mr. Creedy is, he's kinda, like, he's looking out for himself. You know, he's, well, he's, I mean, he's willing, he's willing to sell a lot of people out. <laughs> I mean, can you really blame him, though? I'm, I'm sure a lot of people would do the same thing. Yeah, probably. Especially with this, you know, madman going around killing officials and you're head of the secret police you know there's going to be a decent sized target probably on your back yeah and uh so he orders uh for you to do that and uh diedrich we actually get this really i think it's a really cool scene where diedrich invites evie out because evie kind of is starting to distrust v because she can't exactly envision a future where she's just v's revolutionary and so eventually she runs away to Diedrich's place, and Diedrich is the voice of London, you know, he's got a lot of... He's on every TV in London, he's <laughs> in. Yeah, he, he's my favorite character in the movie, honestly. I just... And he's played by the I, great I, Stephen Fry. Yeah, Stephen Fry, excellent British actor, author, so many great things. Um, and he just, he's because, you know, he's then media personality, um you know the voice in every home basically and you know that given the right circumstances this that he can be used to kind of also help take down this and he does yeah he creates like a scathing parody it's of, so good 
Adam Sutler. Yeah, and it's like over the top and uh, it's like funny and we get we get this cool montage of everybody in London seeing it. Yeah, it's intentionally making a mockery out of yeah. um, Adam Sutler, Mr. Sutler, uh, and just the entire government in general because he knows they're gonna see, and he's basically yeah. coming to terms with like, uh, well, if they're gonna you know catch me and find me and kill me, uh, it's not gonna be for that. Yeah, well, it, he even says that, like, he calls him crazy for doing that, and he's like, oh, don't worry, I'm the voice of London, I'm just gonna have to issue a public apology and do some dumb fundraiser. Yeah. And then, uh, and then like, the next scene, government agents break into his house and black bag him. Yeah, it's... While Evie hides. <laughs> yeah, and it's the, the violence, like, in these scenes, like, of, you know, people getting taken and black bags and just getting beat, the, the violence is just so... It's, yeah. it's like, it feels so real. Because yeah. you're just seeing this guy get bludgeoned in the head. Yeah, and Mr. Creedy like beats the hell out of him with a nightstick. Uh, and uh, eventually, you know, also before that, before that, you know, we get this really neat scene with him. Uh, he gives like this really good speech. He's like to Evie. He's like, you know, I don't really necessarily agree with everything the party does, but you wear a mask so long, you forget to you 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 f start to forget who you are beneath it. Yeah, and that's another thing that adds like the theme of mass in this movie. Because V has, like, a physical mask that is a symbol for his ideas. But you also have these, like, metaphorical masks. Because he has to become the voice of London. Well, yeah, because we're, uh... I mean, it's not even, like, alluded to. It's basically flat-out told to us. But he's, he's gay. And, yeah. you know, since uh, homosexuality is, like, banned and he will get, you know, black bagged for that... It's like he has to put on this mask, and he's like, you know, I can't, you know, a lot of people expect um, me to, you know, invite and entertain women over at my house, but if I, if I had my way, I'd invite who I actually fancy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know. And he, he has, like, a copy of the Quran in his basement, and he's got this, mm -hmm. he got this funny, almost like meme of, it's, long live, it's like that Long Live the Queen poster, but instead of the Queen's face, it's Sutler's face. Yeah. And, uh, you know, eventually, you know, they break into his house, they find it, uh, and, you know, they execute him for it, because you can't have that. But we actually come to find out that V was the one who actually killed him. And we find out that V, or V, was the one who created this entire fake scenario. I mean, they really did black bag Diedrich, but as for, as for Evie... When Evie got black bagged, V intercepted her, killed the actual government agents, and took her, and still pretended she was getting black bagged. Yeah, very elaborate. Yeah. Uh, and so, we get this, like, really depressing scene of, you know, Natalie Portman gets her head shaved, uh, she gets thrown in this cell, and the whole which, which is one of the reasons why she wanted to take the, this movie, mainly, yeah. so and she could shave her head. The whole, the whole like scenario is designed to see if she'll sell V out or not, and to uh, remove her fear of the government. But you know that's pretty hardcore, if you ask me. Yeah, it's it's gonna be pretty traumatic for her. Yeah, definitely. Because, like, you know, I mean, it'd be one thing if it was, like, the actual uh, officers. Uh, but then to find out it's V, you know, this guy you come to trust in a way. Yeah. Uh, doing this to you, it's, like, and afterwards, you know, when she she comes out of the room and she just sees him, that she's like, it's you? Like, you could just feel the exhaustion on her face and just, like... And we get, we get like, this little montage of somebody's, like, passing her notes telling her about this story about how like a let this lesbian girl was completely black bag for her like the changing government and her views and it was just kind of really depressing mm -hmm. uh but then you know evie evie go there's that really famous where she goes out into the rain and she's just like out there in the rain crying and uh you know she kind of she's pissed off at v because who wouldn't be? She just got tortured to see if she'd sell him out or not. 
And it's very, it's very sad. And V gets angry, and he like throws his mask against the wall. Uh, and uh, yeah. Just why don't you walk us through this next scene? Well, After uh, Evie is tortured. <laughs> well, okay, so you know she's just gone through this whole scene of being tortured. You know, you know you know, putting her head in water, and, you know, it's basically, you know, so she goes into the room, and she sees, uh, you know, V there once again, um, and they, like, like, what do you, what's your opinion on, like, the relationship between the two of them? Because, hmm. well. because for, because for me, like, like, I'm, like, relationship in a way of, like, uh, you know, like, working together in terms of, like, taking everything down. Uh, we can get into, like, their actual romantic relationship later, but I feel like, because I feel like that's more kind of, like, shoot-in. I don't know if that's uh, in the comic, but I feel like they just have, like, this bond that's, like, I don't know, it, not yin and yang, but because it feels like, you know, at the start of this, it doesn't feel like she's fully you know, capable of doing this stuff, but once we find out her past and her drive, and then she gets kind of, like, V in her ear, whispering to, like, do these things, like, oh, this happened to your parents, you want to do this, right? Yeah. What do you think of that? Uh, well, you know, it's just, like, V, I think V, uh, v and Evie are supposed to be, like, foils of each other. Yeah, uh, because uh, you know Evie is just this normal person, who you know her parents were black bagged, but she's moved on from it. And V is this revolutionary who wears a mask, never shows his face. He's a burn victim. He's he's been black bagged before, and you know he he saves her life, and then he witnesses her burning, or or V wit or <laughs> Natalie Portman witnesses V blowing up a thing and she she was there for the start of it and after seeing like she doesn't necessarily agree with his violent ways but she does agree that the government isn't very good yeah after, i mean i guess in a way there's sort of a mutual kinship between them. yeah as for natalie portman getting like fake black bagged you know she doesn't take very kindly to that definitely that definitely puts a split in their relationship but I, it definitely does uh come back together for sure. Yeah. And. Right. Uh. No, why don't. Oh, yeah, we gotta cut back to Finch, who this whole oh, time. Yes. He's been co uncovering the mystery. He knows now that the government is like. Is, uh. He knows that the government is, is behind the disease, and he, he's definitely getting, uh. delusioned with the, the party's ideas. Yeah, I really enjoy Finch's detective work in this movie. Um, yeah, I like I like Finch's character. They definitely yeah. changed him up for the movie because in the book Finch is the one that actually shoots V. Uh, because v Finch shoots V and then he, uh, you know, he goes on to actually help Evie, you know, push the train. Because in the book, there's no virus. There was nuclear war. Uh, but. I actually, I kind of like Finch better in the movie than in the book. I just like his role better. It's definitely, it's definitely more simpler to understand. And, you know, I don't think having a complicated character is necessarily, like, always a good thing. Yeah, he's a pretty subdued character in terms of, like, you know, motivation and, um... You can but... feel he just kind of wants to do the right thing. And he just, Yeah. You can feel that he kind of wants to do the right thing, but he, he... Before, he didn't necessarily have the strength, but now that he knows that his government is responsible for all these people dying, you know, he has to do the right thing. And, yeah, why don't, why don't we start going into the end here? Yeah, okay. Alright, so, basically, V... It, it, it wraps, it, it ramps up pretty fast. Yeah, shit, shit goes, like, into the fan. So fast. Yeah, and then catches, then catches on fire. Yeah. Uh, so basically, V's plan is to, on the on the 5th of November, which is fast approaching, he, he ships out, like, 
thousands, like hundreds of thousands of Guy Fox masks to everyone. And his plan is to, he wants everybody to march on Parliament, but he wants to create chaos. And in, in, in one of my favorite scenes in the movie, we see him laying out this like domino art project of his logo. And we see that all these people get their Guy Fox masks, and some people just go early. We see this guy like robbing a store, and we see uh, one of the children of the people that have been watching TV. Yes. She uh, looks like Velma from Scooby Doo. Yeah, we, we affectionately coined her as Velma. Um, yeah. And she she goes out and she gets shot. Yeah, she gets dead in the street, and then like a, a fingerman just shot a child. Yeah, and then the Fingerman kind of just gets surrounded uh, by uh, onlookers, and that's yeah. when they've officially, uh, they've had enough. Yeah, and then riots break out all over London. And that's not, yeah, riots break out all over. People are, like, freaking out. And the government is, the government, Sutler responds in the only way he knows how to. He calls in the troops. No, yeah, of course, like, tons and tons yeah so Sutler's just about ready to gun down his own citizens in order to restore order uh, but then we get this really cool scene of V uh, of V kind of like he he interacts he like uh, not really interacts he put a he puts a knife to the throat of Creedy and he basically tells Creedy like hey if you get me Sutler then I'll surrender to you and, uh, you know, Karini with a knife to his throat, he's like, okay, I'll get you Settler, but we have to meet somewhere, and then you, and then you, you know, you surrender. And then, in my personal favorite scene of the movie, it's the final battle scene. Yeah. So, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not much of a battle in a way. Yeah. More of a, more of a verbal battle. So, Creedy, Creedy and his goons, he's got like six goons there. Uh, they show up and uh, they meet at a place with V, and they give V the they give V Settler, and Settler gets shot in front of V. Settler's dead. Creedy sold out Settler. Then we get this really cool fight scene, where uh, Creedy basically his men kind of surround V, and they're all pointing guns at him, and then he's like, "Let me get a look at your face." And V's like, "No," and two guys try to remove his mask, and he kills them. And then they, uh, we get this one of the coolest lines, and Creedy tells uh, B, he's like, oh, you're not like him, you're not afraid to die, you're like me. And then B's like, the only thing we, me and you have in common is that we're both about to die. And then... Yeah, and at this point, it's, you know, V, he's at the end of his plan, you know, he's kind of achieved what he's wanted to achieve. Yeah. So at this point, you know, he is content with dying for the cause, and I think we're pretty aware of that at this point. Yeah. And so, you know, Creedy orders his men to shoot, and they just light V up. I mean, they must have... They, that's like six guys all shooting pistols at him. He must have get, gotten shot over a hundred times. Yes. But... I, I would have been very surprised if he stood up after that. But you know what he does, Chase? He stands up. We get that really cool scene where he drops to one knee, and he, the, you get a really close-up shot, and we just hear him breathing. And then he gets back up, and he says, my turn, and then he throws knives, and he kills all of Creedy's goons in a really well-choreographed scene with really cool music. And then finally, he we get to my favorite lines in the movie. Like, this is my favorite scene right here. Uh, he's, he's like walking towards Creedy and Creedy's like, he reloaded and he's shooting at him and he says, why won't you die? Then B gives his best lines and he's like, beneath this, uh, beneath this mask, there is more than flesh, there is an idea. And then he, and they snaps Creedy's neck and he's like, and ideas are bulletproof. And bam, Creedy's neck gets snapped. Bye bye. Creedy, I bye. Uh, one thing i wanted to get your your thoughts on was because you you mentioned it um how v has this symbol um and then but also um you know the government has this symbol it's kind of like um it's like crosses in a way red crosses 
And it's a play um, on the swastika. <laughs> yeah, it's very eerily uh, reminiscent of a, a swastika. Um, but I was like, what? Because, you know, we have this symbol, this this evil symbol from the government, and then this uh, kind of, I don't know if you would say symbol of hope from V, but it's like, uh, like, what do you think, like, these symbols are supposed House is like symbols can represent so much, and like in terms of uh, you know power and um, you know influence on others, and just kind of like how TV and all that it can be a symbol yeah. to influence, but also like this is just a symbol for uh, everyone out there to look towards. Uh, yeah, we even get uh, v, v even talks about that. He talks about how like. Oh well, symbols symbols can mean something. Symbols don't have any power without the pe without people believing in them. Mm -hmm. And when people believe in symbols, it gives them power. And he has a really good line. It's like that's why blowing up a building can change the world. Because that building is more than a building; it's a symbol. And uh, yeah, I think I think this movie nails symbols really well, and it's one of the themes in this movie. And, uh, yeah. And then V ends up, you know, V dies in Evie's arms, and Evie puts his body on a train with a ton of explosives. Mm -hmm. And then Finch shows up, and Finch eventually lets Evie, uh, he lets Evie pull the lever, and he sends the train, and the 1812 overture starts to play again, and then Parliament blows up. I mean, if he's, if he's going in with a bang, he's going out with a bang. Yeah. And Parliament blows up, and we get this. We get this really cool scene of what? Like, there's got to be at least thousands of people. Yeah, in, so many people in Guy Fox masks. Yeah, they all put on their Guy Fox masks and cloaks. And uh, since Sutler's dead, nobody's there to give the army orders. So the 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 general ends up just telling the army to stand down, and you could like they, he doesn't want to massacre the masses. And uh, he, these people just pass through the army, and they they watch Parliament blow up. And uh, you know, v, V's body obviously blows up with Parliament. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a bit symbolic. It almost says his symbol is completely destroying the other one. Yeah, kind of taking down. He's kind of ta you know, it, very literally taking down British government as he goes out. Yeah. And the movie, the movie ends with this hopeful, hopeful scene of fireworks going off and people taking off the Guy Fox mask, and that's how the movie ends. And I really like how the film ends, but I do think that the book ends better because the way the book ends is, you know, the film is obviously a lot more hopeful, while the book is much like grittier and more grim, uh, because. And in the book, Adam Sutler is called Adam Susan, and he has like this relationship with a supercomputer. It's a bit weird, don't ask. Uh, but, I'm intrigued. Uh, but yeah, it ends with actually Evie taking over the mantle of V and leading the British people. I mean, that's the thing though. This, we don't know, of course, what happens. Uh, at the end of this, it's yeah. very open to interpretation. You know how how does how do they uh, come back up from this uh, taking down this fascist government? It's you know it's not going to be easy to put something else together, let alone something of this caliber. Yeah. And uh, obviously, and before right before the movie ends, we get one of one of my favorite little lines in the movie. It's when Finch is asking Evie who V was, and Evie is telling him that V was basically everybody. He was my mother. He was my father. He was my friend. He he has transcended being a mortal. He is now he's been immortalized, basically, as what he died for a symbol. Well, yeah, and that's the thing, you know, uh, you you can't you can't kill uh, an idea, a belief, yeah. a thought, yeah. and he is now uh, a belief. Yeah, I, as he says, you know, ideas are bulletproof. You can't just shoot an idea and be done with it. He's more than that now. I mean, unless unless you're it's Inception, but yeah, unless it's Inception. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's how *Beef for Vendetta* ends.
It's you, quite the film. Quite the film. Let's move into our end thoughts and ratings here. Okay. Uh, would you like me to start? Uh, you know what? You go first. Oh, okay. Why, well, thank you. Um, uh, v from Vendetta is, you know, like I said, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not a big comic guy. Uh, I know, shocking. Um, but this film is, uh, it's, it's, it's got a lot going on. It's got a lot of big ideas, a lot of important ideas, uh, you know, to kind of get people thinking about and, you know, this film is so ahead of its time in terms of, well, not just stuff going on today, but, uh, you know, kind of getting people to think about certain things in new ways. Um, and I think that's important, of course. Um, I think uh, Natalie Portman, Hugo Weaving do a really good job. Uh, John Hurt is great. Stephen Fry is probably my favorite character. Uh, sorry, Dietrich is probably my favorite character. Um, my only real big complaint with this, um, other than like you know certain like convoluted uh, you know things interweaving in and out, um, I do think it is a bit long. I think it could maybe be you know two hours, a little under two hours. Um, it for me at least it tends to drag a bit, um, but I never was like flat out bored. Um, you know, and I guess that's, you know, me, I'm not a big action guy, um, but I, I enjoyed it, um, I, I like, I like what this film represents, I would probably rate this film a solid 7 out of 10, um, and, yeah, I, I, it was nice to revisit it, uh, what about you, Nando? Uh, what are you? What are your thoughts? Well, I certainly agree with you, except uh, on the fact that I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get bored while watching this movie. I think I, you know, this movie definitely interested me the interested me the whole way. Uh, but you know, I also went into this movie with the uh, background knowledge of the book. I think that definitely enhanced my experience. Uh, and you know, this movie is one of my favorites. I think it's just everything is done really well in this movie. From the ideas and the themes to the action. I think it just executed super well. And, you know, I'm I'm gonna give this movie a, a solid 10 out of 10. Just want to bang it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sound the alarm, sound the alarm. That's two episodes in a row. That's a back-to-back. -back. 10 out of 10. I don't, who knows if that will ever be replicated. Who oh, knows? wow. I think that's your that's your first one if I'm not mistaken, right? No, I think I give the Iron Giant a ten out of ten. Oh, okay, well. Still. Yeah, I'll call some high high praise. Yeah. Um uh, who knows if uh that'll continue uh next episode. Uh, thank you everyone for uh, you know, listening and uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe, let us know your thoughts on V for Vendetta. Um, um yeah. And uh, why don't I give a little tease? Oh, thank you. I would appreciate that. Yeah. This is a it's a film you haven't seen. No, it's, a, it's a film I haven't seen, but it certainly got an interesting title. We're going <laughs> to be talking about Seven Psychopaths next time. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite, like, underseen movies, and I'm so excited to show it to you and talk about it. I oh. think you're gonna really, I think you're gonna really like it. I assume there's gonna be psychopaths, and I assume there's gonna be seven of them. I guess you'll have to wait and see. Alright, with that everybody, thanks for watching. Until next time, thank you.